Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles. And thanks to Cooler Master, we have a CM Storm Mech keyboard to unbox and review right now. You guys want to know what the most important feature of a keyboard is? It's got to have them mechanical keys, baby. Mechanical keys! All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we have the CM Storm Mech because it has mechanical switches, meaning it has Cherry MX switches. Specifically on this one, it has the Cherry MX Brown switches, which are a medium resistant switch, but still have a distinctive click, which is really, really cool. I've also used uh, the red switches, and I've also used uh, the blue switches, which are very, very clicky and loud, but you can try them all for your personal preference. Now, the things that caught my eye with this keyboard was it had some unique features that I hadn't seen on a lot of other keyboards, and that is it has an integrated sound card, it has USB 3.0 capability, and it has a removable reinforced aluminum plate on top of it so you can actually customize it. So that's what drew me to the keyboard. So now we're going to go ahead and open it up and take a look what's inside. All right, pretty straightforward. Pulled latches. I already cut the tape earlier, but like an idiot, I forgot to turn the camera on, so we have to do it again. Uh, but I use this, my little 3D printed knife. If you guys haven't seen that video, check it out. I think it's cool. I 3D printed my own box knife and it actually works. All right, so open up the box here. You can see on top we have the CM Storm functions, tells you how to use the keyboard. It's kind of like your little quick cheat sheet. And it comes with another insert that uh, has a lot of languages and talks about megahertz and memory and a lot of other stuff you wouldn't expect to see on a keyboard. But uh, to be honest with you, it's probably just letting me know that if I'm allergic to keys, I might die. All right, so let's go ahead and pull the keyboard out of the box. I should also note to you guys that this wasn't a brand new keyboard that they sent me, so uh, there may be some little slight differences, and I'll go ahead and call those out. Uh, I also have the tools here. It comes with the key removal tool and the Allen key for removing the plate on top. And that's everything that's in the box. Now, if you buy this, you're going to probably get a USB cable, but they accidentally forgot to put a USB cable in it, so we'll just be using one of my own. All right, first off, I have a plate on top. This is the stock plate that you'll receive if you buy one of these, and it's just aluminum, and it has some cool stuff on top that shows you where you plug in everything on the back side of the keyboard. But when they sent this to me, I wasn't expecting it. It has a custom plate on it that's the CM Storm Pult. Uh, this is StarCraft II Triple Crown Champion, this little dude up here. All right, if we flip the keyboard around here, you can see we have two USB 3.0s. We have a place for a microphone, a headphone, we also have a plug-in for the USB 3 cable, and then we have another USB port here to plug in another cable. Uh, I'm actually not quite sure what that one does because everything works through the USB 3 cable. So if you guys know, leave it down in the comments. Now, another interesting feature of this keyboard is as a handle, which honestly you need one because this keyboard is gigantic. So if you're going to a LAN party or something, you got a nice handle to hang on to. Or if you want to swing the thing around like a Halo Energy Sword, knock yourself out. Swinging this around like a Halo Energy Sword may void your warranty. Now, another thing that I just right off find that's a little weird and will take some getting used to is the keyboard is not symmetrical at all. You can see all these like really strange curves um, here and everything, and, and it looks really cool, but I've kind of got an OCD complex, so this is going to take a little bit of getting used to for me. But the nice thing is, is the wrist rest is incredibly comfortable on it, and the keys feel very, very crisp and very solid, which is nice because that's what you want in a mechanical keyboard. All right, using the key puller, you just push down and pull up. You can see that's a brown switch. The colors literally mean the color of the switch, um, and that's how they differentiate between the mechanical properties. But the nice thing is each one of these Cherry MX switches has an LED on it, which is something that I haven't seen before, uh, a backlit mechanical keyboard, which is one of the biggest draws to this keyboard that I saw was that it was backlit. And uh, most mechanical keyboards I've seen, they just don't have backlights. So I thought that that was really cool. Also, putting the keys on and taking them off is incredibly simple. There's just a little cross pattern on there. You just push it on, and you're good to go to pull it off. You just put this thing on, pull it off. So if you have to clean between stuff using uh, Q-tips or you want to get underneath it, it's really, really easy. And plus, because this whole panel here is removable, it's really, really easy to clean and get the crap that gets between your keys. All right, now I kind of want to get this back to a stock look and feel because I don't want everybody watching this video to think they're going to get the CM Storm pulp cover uh, on their keyboard when they purchase it because I don't think you do. I couldn't, I couldn't find any video proof of that, so I'm just going to assume that uh, Cooler Master sent me uh, one of their samples from the office or something that they had hanging around, and that's why I have this on there. Does it make me a completely horrible nerd that I don't know who this Polt guy is? I mean, he's a StarCraft II Triple Crown champion, 
man, I guess I guess I'm just not that heavy into esports um, as far as knowing all the big names and everything like that. Kind of curious if that's something that interests you guys out there. I mean, are, are some of my fans out there? Do you guys watch this esport gaming like follow the champions and who wins everything? And I mean, do you guys have like betting pools at work and stuff like that? I'm just I'm wondering. I'm wondering if this is something that I need to like start getting into. All right, so all the screws are removed, so the panel just comes up just like a so. We'll go ahead and put that over there and you can put the replacement panel on it. Now, not in this video, but in a future video, I will be repainting and refinishing this to incorporate the Barnacles Nerdgasm logo onto it, which is gonna be really, really cool. Um, and that was another reason is I tried painting keyboards before, and it's a complete and total pain in the ass, so it's nice to be able to just take these parts off and paint them independently. Looking underneath, you can see everything's really easy to clean and get at, and all the screws are concealed under the metal. So as far as a keyboard to keep clean, I think this is going to be really, really easy. Okay, let's go ahead and pop on the, the aluminum plate here, and I'm going to screw it down for you real fast. Alright, since Cooler Master didn't include a cable, I'm just going to use a blue one. This normally comes with a black USB 3 cable, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. You see immediately the keyboard lights up, and it lights up really good. Like, I've got a lot of light on in this room, and you can clearly see the keys are illuminated. Here, I'll even turn the light off, and you can really get an idea of how bright the LEDs are on this keyboard. It looks fantastic. All right, there's a few things to call out that set this apart from most keyboards I've seen. One is it doesn't have a Windows key. It has these function keys that just simply say FN on them. And normally, when you push the function key, it's the Windows key. So the thing I don't really understand, however, is you have to use this function key when programming, so I don't really know what this function key does. It doesn't, it doesn't appear to really do anything. I think that is literally just a Windows key. All right, this keyboard has a slightly different layout than most keyboards I've seen. The first thing you can call out immediately is it has five dedicated macro keys. But those aren't the only keys you can macro. These are like your mechanical macro keys, but you can also pretty much map any key on the keyboard to do anything you want using the software from Cooler Master, but even not using the software, you can program these macro keys to do anything you want just using the keyboard. Now, one thing to call out is the function key right here that says FN. This is actually the Windows key, and I wish they had to just put the Windows key emblem on it, because there's already a function key over here, and it's the true function key that allows you to do functions. This one only acts as the Windows key, and if you hold down function, you press F12, you can actually lock it. You can see the little LED came on, it locks it, and then the function key does nothing. It's completely inert. And that's nice for when you're gaming so you don't accidentally bump the Windows key. So that is a really cool feature. I wish all keyboards had the ability to disable the Windows key when you're not using it. Now, another cool feature of it is that you can actually change, you can turn the LEDs on and off by simply holding function and hitting F1. You can see the LEDs are on, they're off. You can also change the level of brightness. It looks like there's about five levels of brightness, maybe four and then off. But you also have a mode you can change. You can make it do like breathing, where it just pulses, which looks really, really cool when you have the lights off in the room. And then you can go ahead and put it into FPS mode, which just shows you your macros, your WSD, and you've got your uh, WASD, rather, and your arrow keys, which that's also really, really cool at night, because then you don't have all that brightness coming up off the keyboard, especially if you're playing in the pitch dark. And then you've got your standard keys up here. We have your play, pause, your stop, your track forward, track reverse. You can also go ahead and change your volume up and down, which I verified works perfectly. You don't even have to install any of the keyboard software to do that. All right, now if you want to record a macro on the keyboard internally without the software, you can actually record up to five macros right in the keyboard. And to do that, all you do is hold down the function key, press the number of the macro you want. Note, you don't press the macro button, you press the number. So you press one, it blinks, that means it's ready. Now you hold down function and alt until the little caps lock starts blinking over here. That means it's ready for input, and then you just input your macro. Jerry is cool, enter. I'm gonna make that my macro. So now you just hold down function, hit alt again. That saves the macro, and then to play it back, you just simply press the macro key. All right, to demonstrate, I'm gonna go ahead and push M1. And you see, Jerry is cool. M1, Jerry is cool. M1, Jerry is cool. And it plays back the macro at the exact same speed that you input it in everything. It's really, really cool and pretty intuitive once you get it figured out. Now, if you wanna do more advanced macro, I mean, you just download the software from Cooler Master's site right here and you can actually go in and you can modify all kinds of stuff. You can click any key on the keyboard that you want, end, delete, up, shift, 
doesn't matter. And up here you can say whether you want to do a macro, whether you want it to be a single key, a default key, you can do advanced functions with it, like volume up, volume down. You can map anything to pretty much anything using this software, which I thought was cool. And it has Macro Studio. So if you want to create a new macro, I can do the this is, this is Jerry macro. And then down here, I can just literally say this is, hit the record button, and then I want to do a one-to-one -one mode, or you can do speed mode, or it enters as fast as possible, or God mode, which does zero delays between actions. So let's do God mode. And then just type, this is Jerry. And then I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. And now I've got my macro saved. So now I've got the this is Jerry macro, so I can go back here and let's say I want to map that to M1. I can come up here and say, okay, I want to do a macro. And for the macro, I'm going to do the this is Jerry macro. Click OK. And now M1 is mapped to that macro using the software. You can also create separate profiles um, for different applications and uh, pretty much configure single key actions and functions. You can even have stuff launch programs and key combinations. So it's pretty infinitely configurable. So as far as a keyboard goes, you can literally do anything with it if you're willing to put in the time. Now one little pitfall is it doesn't appear to be any place where you can export these profiles or save them that I can find, which means if you have to format and redo your computer, you're not gonna have an easy way getting all your macros back. So I, I thought that was a little bit of a disappointment and I hope that at some point they add the ability to import and export profiles in all of your settings. I think that would be really cool because I do a lot of reinstalls. All right, well obviously one of the most important aspects of a keyboard is how comfortable it is to type on and how well you can type on it. So I'm at typeracer.com. So let's go ahead and enter a typing race and do a little typing on this thing and see, see how well it works. It is a very, very comfortable keyboard to type on. You guys should check out typeracer.com. It's cool, it's free, you just log in, it's just infinite typing tests. It helps you keep your, your hands warmed up and stuff if you got a long day of coding ahead of you. All right, here we go, two, one, go. Let me tell you why you're here. You're, ah, I already messed up. You're here because you know something. What you know, you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Oops. Like a splinter in your mind driving you mad oops driving you mad oh man driving you mad so it is going to take me a little bit of time to get warmed up to this but the keys do feel good and the keyboard's comfortable and that's what's really important now another feature of this keyboard is that it has a sound card built into it and it's cool in windows 8 it's just detected and it works it just shows up as a standard usb audio device and here i have my barodynamic mmx 300s and you literally just plug them in right here on the side. So it's got one for your mic and one for your keyboard, which is nice. You can never have too many mic inputs, especially when you're a YouTube producer. Now, I'm going to go ahead and listen to a little bit of music, and let's see how well it works. All right, guys. Well, as I feared, the onboard sound doesn't have enough power to drive the MMX 300s because these are a 300 ohm headphone. They do require quite a bit of power, but just to give you a reference, my my Zonar STX drives them really nicely. Most sound cards drive them good, and I even get pretty decent volume off of them when I'm listening on something like my iPhone. Uh, so this is very, very low powered. So if you're using earbuds or you're using a headset that doesn't require much power, you're probably going to get enough volume for it to be comfortable, but it, with with a high-end headphone like this, you're still going to want a dedicated amp and DAC combo or a real sound card. But as far as the mic input, the mic input does work good and can be used with things like TeamSpeak and stuff like that to have an alternate input source. And of course, the other fantastic feature that this keyboard has is it has two USB 3 connectors on it, which is absolutely awesome because the USB 3.0 devices that are coming out now are like really super fast. A lot of them are like storage and memory card readers and things like that. And I don't like having to run cables all the way down to the computer, especially when USB 3 cables are generally only about three foot long. They're really short usually. So it's nice to have them. And I like the fact that they're in the middle and they're on the top so that you don't have your devices, you don't have your cables interfering with everything over here like the mouse pad, for instance. All right, guys, well, there you have it. That is the Cooler Master CM Storm Mech Keyboard. And there's a lot of pros and only a few cons. So let's go ahead and go over that and just do a recap. So the things I really like about the keyboard is one, it is a very, very heavyweight keyboard. It's got that aluminum top on it. It's got all the rubber stoppers on the bottom. This thing, when you put it on the desk, it's not moving anywhere. This thing sticks to the desk like absolute glue. And I, and I love that because uh, every other keyboard I've used does tend to move around a lot. This doesn't. 
Unfortunately, the side effect and con of that is this keyboard has an enormous footprint. You can see it covers up my whole face and like half my body. This is a large keyboard. That's my arm fully extended. So make sure you have the desk space for it. I obviously do because I have like a 10 person dinner table as my desk. Now the other thing is it's got very, very brilliant white black lights on literally every single key on the keyboard. Now for a mechanical keyboard, um, that's actually a really neat feature. That's something that I've never experienced before. I didn't think it got that bright, but I love that you can adjust the brightness dynamically on the keyboard. And I love that you can configure most of the keyboard's functionality without the software. The software does augment it and allow you to do more complex macros and stuff like that. But the basic functionality is all built into the keyboard so you can just use it right out of the box. Now, my other gripe was the function key on the left side says it's a function key, but it's not. It's either the Windows key or if you lock it, it does nothing. It, I couldn't get it to act as a function key over here. Even if I had it locked as the Windows key and I tried to use the function key up here, it did nothing. So I really wish that that was just a Windows key. Now I can buy a Windows key cap and just stick it on there so I'm not too worried about it. And honestly, that's not even necessary because I know what it does. I like having the macro buttons right here on the side really close to WASD because that's really cool when you're gaming because it's convenient in your hands right there. I think that was a great design decision. And I absolutely adore the metal plate. The metal plate is awesome. You know, and I like the fact that they already included another one that they had already decorated and painted here, which is the CM Sorn Polt, which is their uh, gaming champion up here, StarCraft II Triple Crown Champion. Go Polt. But it's cool because now I can, I can take these off and paint them and customize them, and it makes the keyboard very, very easy to clean. I hate cleaning between the keys on my keyboard. I absolutely hate it. This makes that a non-issue. I also really like the wrist rest and I found it very, very comfortable to type on, but there is a weird symmetry thing going on here where all the angles are like off angles. And I think it looks really cool and everything like that, but I basically got like OCD. So I like things to be really symmetrical. So it's taking me a little bit of getting used to. But from a design standpoint, this thing is gorgeous. It's complete eye candy for your desktop. And when you're typing on it, you don't notice the symmetry difference at all. I love having all of the connectors up here at the top for USB 3 and for the sound card and everything because some keyboards I've used put the USB ports on the side and it tends to interfere with the mouse and stuff like that sometimes so you have to move things apart and when you're dealing with a keyboard that's this large you really don't want anything on the side. I like that they put everything up here on top. That was great. I like the fact that it uses uh, just a regular USB cable so that you can, you can put any length cable on it you want. Most keyboards have it hardwired on this side. I thought that that was really cool. And just to reiterate, the cable that's included when you purchase the keyboard is actually a black cable, not a blue cable like the one that I was using, which looked horribly out of place. I also used the risers on the back here, and they work really, really well. Even with the risers up, the keyboard still has zero movement on the desktop with any kind of weight on it whatsoever, and it feels completely solid. As far as keyboards go, you're not going to get any more solid than this. It honestly feels like an old-style IBM Model M as far as the weight and presence on your desk. And last but not least, the internal sound card. If you're using it with earbuds or you're using it with very, very low impedance headphones, it's going to work fine. It's not going to give you a, a tremendous amount of volume. But don't expect this to use it with high ohm headsets like the Barodynamic MMX 300s. Those will work fine on things like iPhones and stuff like that cranked at max volume, but this just didn't feel like it had enough power to push that, and I'm sure that's because the entire keyboard's powered over USB. And that's just not enough power. To, to drive a really nice pair of headphones. So don't expect the sound card in this to basically be better than the sound card that's in your computer. It just won't be. But it is great for things like TeamSpeak and stuff like that where you need microphones or if you just have uh, one of the, you know, the Calm headsets that just has one ear with a speaker, that's gonna work great with this. And I think honestly, that's probably what they're targeting this app more than anything. And last but not least, it's got a handle. And the thing looks like a freaking chainsaw from like Gears of War or something. So if you go to a LAN party and things get a little out of hand, you can swing this sucker around, take some heads off. I'm, God, this thing is so heavy, guys. Oh, man, that's a risk killer. But uh, yeah, you swing this, you're going to take a head off. But I should probably note that Cooler Master in no way endorses using this as a weapon. And if you do, you may void the warranty. So make sure you ask them before you go and try to commit any kind of carnage with this, okay? Promise me. Well guys, in a future video, I'm going to go ahead and do the painting and refinishing of this top plate on this keyboard and everything, and we're going to give it the, the Barnacles Nerdgasm touch. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Leave your comments and questions down below. I love talking to you guys. Come over to Twitter. I'm on Twitter like all the time. Everybody comes over to Twitter and sends me a message and they're like, you're probably not going to respond to me, and then I respond to them. It's what I do. I'm, I, I love talking to people over on Twitter. Get over there. Come over there right now. Okay, now I'm just pushing it too hard. Forget it. Forget it. Just stay away from Twitter. Don't do it. Reverse psychology. 
But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is a really, really cool keyboard. A big thanks to Cooler Master for sending it to me. It's going to be an awesome addition to the Nerd Cave. And it is a beastly, beastly mechanical keyboard. So, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. And until next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.